I did do a live reaction for uh, Richardson Hitchens defeating Gustavo Limos last night, but the zone and YouTube made me butcher the video so bad that um, eight minutes of content had to be taken out of a 13 minute video. So it was no point in uploading it. But now 1230 PM Eastern standard time, Sunday, April the 7th, 2024, we're going to talk about the fight. Uh, before we listen to the scorecards, go get uh, fighter reactions like Shakur Stevenson, what he had to say on social media, of course, Devin Haney. I want to say uh, the zone needs to adopt what PBC has been doing. And the zone has done it before with earlier main events, earlier cards for us East Coast people, because this card went until 1 a.m. By the way, I watched the Sky Nicholson fight, fell asleep halfway through the eight round um, um, uh, Galalia five fight. And also the main event of WrestleMania, halfway through that, I fell asleep and I woke up um, halfway through the the uh, Diego Pacheco fight, which also he had a uh, rough night last night. So what I'm going to say is this happens. Fighters are going to have bad nights for whatever reason. If I was younger, you know, I've been covering YouTube on for fucking 10 years now, man. My fucking God, I've been covering boxing on YouTube for 10 years, 10 plus years. So I would have put exposed, uh, this fighter's not who he, they think they are, but fighters have bad nights. And right now, Richardson Hitchens was do his. Shakur Stevenson had his. Uh, Devin Haney got rocked by Jorge Linares, of all people. See if he note Lopez against uh, Nakatani. Boots Ennis didn't look good against that Herbert Taki and that guy. It happens. Mayweather Castillo won. It happens. Mayweather Madonna won. It happens. But he definitely needs to shine in his next fight, just like Shakur does as well. So, where do we begin? Um, I've been keeping an eye on Gustavo Limos, Gustavo Limos since he beat Lee Selby. I covered this fight here on the channel. He was a long-time mandatory at 135 pounds. Excuse me, we hit 135 pounds, but then he ended up missing weight and losing his. I forgot the story behind it. But I've been keeping an eye on him now since, what, uh, two plus years. So I'm not really surprised. One of the reasons why I was really interested in this card, I said, okay, all right, Gustavo Lima's going to come to fight because I've seen him fight before. And Richardson Hitchens, looking at his resume, despite Jose Zapata, he's never seen nobody like that. So this was a huge step up for him. Now, I do feel he won. The 117-11 uh, uh, card, that was some bullshit by Tim Cheatham. He always, it's like every couple of years, he's got some wackadoo card. This is what I posted on my social media, by the way. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe, and teach me controversy with 5 View 360. Also, shout out to Sky Nicholson. Um, easily cruised bass at Sarah Mock Food. Uh, was talking big shit about, um, about uh, uh, Amanda Serrano. Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor are in talks again. Hold on, what was I doing with my social media? This is what I posted on my uh, Twitter, and I do feel this is true. Um, judges need to be well-rested, sober, and somewhat sequestered, meaning like kind of locked away during fight week, not on no uh, OJ trial type shit, but just, you know, away from people. Make sure you know they're rested. Make sure they're well-fed because they got a very important job. Their jobs affect people's lives. You know, people go into emotional breakdowns and depression. Fighters do when the cards don't go their way when they should have won a fight. It's famously known that Oscar De La Hoya sh straight went to cocaine hell after he let. You can say the judges, whatever the case may be. I think he beat Trinidad, but in reality, he let him off the hook. By dancing around. So uh, I was at a I was at an event years ago. Uh, at the Barclays Center with, uh, um, and I remember it was the end of the night and I'm walking and I look like, oh shit, like that's Julie Letterman. Cause this little like area in Barclays Center where you can get your Lyft or your Uber. And I'm thinking to myself, what if I had a secret envelope with a few thousand dollars in it? Like, Hey, I've heard you've been having some problems. We can make that all go away. Make sure my guy wins. Let's play me where that came from. And you know, you can you can easily approach these judges. They're regular people just like us. I'm not saying this is the case last night. I'm not crying corruption. More incompetence. But I'm saying I will not be surprised if, 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 if some judges are on a take. Because they're just so easily acceptable. So 
let's go listen to the post fight interview i wish i could show you clips but i can't because the zone you know for some reason last night they were on my ass even though these videos are fair use and can be legally used, they still block it until you beat the copyright restriction, which can take days. And by that time, people don't want to hear about no Richardson Hitchens on YouTube. So uh, let's go listen in. Here's the cards or them reading the cards. Grab it. This is from my video last night. Tim Cheatham, 117, 111. Whoa. Max DeLuca and Steve Weisfeld both score this bout 115 to 113. Mm -hmm. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated, Richardson Hitchens. 117-111. Two, you could probably live with Sergio. Your reaction? Terrible. 117 and 111 is a terrible decision. And once again, they always have one judge that just has to ruin a great fight. I can understand 115, 113 either way. I can understand a draw, but I cannot, I cannot understand 117, 111. That's disrespectful to both these men. So Richardson Hitchens survives Gustavo Lee. So before we listen to the post fight interview, I'm not going to say that he's exposed. We've seen guys like. Oh, that was what I was saying last night. I know it's kind of confusing, but what I'm saying right now is live on Sunday. I'm, I'm saying this live on Sunday, 1236 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This what you're about to hear now is what I was saying last night after the fight. But I can't show the visuals because of um, the copyright. Like uh, Tifimo Lopez, he get buzzed by post fight interview. Beep to win that fight, a close fight throughout. How confident were you when that final bell rang that you had won the fight? I felt like I, I, felt like I won the fight uh, unanimously. It was a close fight. I made it close some rounds when I gave him some right, I gave him right hands and you know, I stood there and trade with him because my corner kept telling me like the fight is close, but I felt like I was out boxing him, laying the cleanest shots and boxing smart, but he was tough, undefeated 29-0 in his prime and he came over here to win. He came in shape, he, he came to my country to win and I felt like I won, but you know, he in my country, so they're going to try to say he got robbed or whatever. It's cool, but I felt like I won easily. It was a good fight, though. You've dealt with pressure fighters before. What made his pressure different? He was get, he was short. He was, he, had, he was real powerful. And, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was relentless. He wanted to win. So it is what it is. And nobody want to lose their O, especially somebody 29 and 0. I was only 17 and 0, now I'm 18 and 0. It's just a learning experience, just still growing. This is my this is my first active solid year in boxing since I got with Matchroom. So they can boo all they want. I mean, not his fans can boo. My fans is happy because we got the W and we 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 had a world championship now. I dig deep and I and they wanted to see me in a tough fight, see if I had that dog in me. Did I show I had that? You did show you. Okay. The last fight wasn't exciting. I thought this was exciting. Lemos came, he made excitement, he caught me with some good shots, I caught him with some good shots, and we gave the fans what they wanted. So you had the second half of the fight. You took a couple of clean shots. I think it was the eighth round of that fight. It looked like you had you hurt uh, t towards the end of that round. Did you feel hurt any time during this fight? I mean, no, nah, not really. He caught me with a good shot, and it, it take more than just one good shot to, make, to you know, win a fight. I, I caught him with some good shots too. You know, it is what it is. What do you take away from a fight like this against a pressure fighter? Because what's coming next, or what could be coming next, is another pressure fighter. What do you take away from that? You gotta be in shape, man. You can't underestimate nobody. I mean, I knew Lemos was gonna come. It wasn't, I knew it wasn't gonna be an easy fight. People were saying it's gonna be an easy fight. It's telemade, but I know his style was telemade for my style. Some, a come forward fighter that's gonna make it ugly. He said it was gonna be an easy fight. Like I said, we got the W and it's on to the next. He was throwing a lot more punches than you were. Maybe not landing with the accuracy, but he was throwing a lot. Were you concerned that the judges were gonna see that? No, I, I felt I was laying the cleanest shots and I was again, I was playing the cleanest shots and making sure all his flurries wasn't really landing. You know, I was tying him up, turning him, uh, uh, neutralizing him. But it was a good fight. It is what it is. I felt like I wanted a good fight versus a solid fight. This is what the people came here to see, and this is what they, they got the show they wanted. You are now next in line for Super Real Matias' IBF world title. He's going to come back on June 15th on DAZN against Liam Paro. Do you believe you should be the next guy he faces? I feel like whoever is the winner of the fight, uh, that fight, whoever is the winner of the, uh, the, next, next, the fight in the next two weeks, the WBC, that's the fight I want. I've been telling the fans that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, my team know what's going on with me. My team know my issues or whatever. We're we, we going to go back to the drawing board, talk to it as a team, but 
I felt like I could have definitely put on a better performance, but I knew that tonight I wasn't gonna come, come in 100%, and I know the reason why, but like I said, I still got it done like a true champion. What was the reason why? I'll leave it, I'll talk to my team about it, and maybe next time we're over coffee or send me to talk about it too. Congratulations, Rich. I wanna thank all the fans back in New York, all the fans in, in uh, you know, all the fans that came out to watch me, all the fans that tuned in, Brooklyn, New York, uh, my coaches, my manager, Keith Conley. Thank you to Eddie Hearn for giving me another great opportunity, a tough fight. Uh, it was great. I mean, like I said, I want to see some. I want to see all the other champions or all the upcoming guys take a test like this, and let's see how they come out. I felt like I, I did what I had to do, and I passed it with great colors. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you, Eddie. We'll turn to you briefly. This man's right there in the world title picture, but that was a tough fight, no question about it. How did you see it play out? I thought it was a coming of age fight for Richards and Hitchens. You know, the criticism in the past is he's not exciting. He just gave us a brilliant fight in there. Lemos was incredible. I thought it was a very close fight. I think 115, 113 is a good scorecard. 117, 111 is not. That's sometimes, disconnected from reality. Yep, and sometimes that can, you know, get people riled up. But in a 115, 113 fight, it's a fight that can go either way. Lemos finished strong. You know, Richie had a brilliant middle stage of the fight and then was closing well and Lemos come back. I thought it was tremendous. I mean, one thing's for sure, we're seeing Lemos back on Matrim and Zone. I think he was brilliant, but Richie won a very, very close fight. He had to dig deep tonight. He had to show something that he hasn't shown before. He stood and he traded. He let Lemos back him up too much early in the fight. Then he started to hold his ground and he gave everyone a great fight. You know, and he showed that he's willing to go into the trenches against someone who's 29 and 0. So a fight that maybe could have gone either way. I think Richie did enough to win it 115, 113. What a brilliant fight, great performance. We know he's got the skill, now he's, we know he's got the heart. He's gonna have to improve if he's gonna beat the likes of Subriel Matias, Devin Haney, all those guys he wants. But tonight he showed something different and gave the fans a tremendous fight. Appreciate it, Eddie. Thank you. Guys. I ain't gonna lie, I was so tired, I probably don't even know what else I said in that video last night. But we're back real time. Uh, here's the scorecards. Um, Y'all think Tim Cheatham is on the take? It seems to be what people are saying here, that Tim Cheatham's on the take. For that 117-111. Said he needs investigating. So, looking at the 140-pound division, let's talk about the guy we saw last night. The Richardson Hitchens we saw last night Loses to Devin Haney, loses to Isak Cruz, all that holding, loses to Sabriel Matisse, loses to Tiafimo Lopez. Tiafimo Lopez is up and down. You never know what Tiafimo going to show up. He could be a head case one fight, then look like a superstar the next. Sabriel Matias also had a bad night. They all have. So he got to sharpen up. And all that holding, you know, nah, dog, that ain't the way. So whatever injury or whatever he says it is, you know, it's still making an excuse. It's still making an excuse. He said, you know, something happened. I don't know. It's still an excuse no matter how you slice it. So Sabril Matias and uh, Liam Perro are going to be fighting on uh, June the 15th. Do not be surprised if Liam Perro wins. Don't be surprised. We've been covering him on the channel. We're going to be covering that fight, obviously. Where's that fight taking place? Puerto Rico. I always thought about as uh, one day to identify as a Puerto Rican. I almost did one day, uh, like a couple years ago. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be Puerto Rican for a couple years. You can do that now. It's 2024. It respect my pronouns. Um, so, yeah, well, because uh, Lemos is going to get more fights. We don't, don't think we're going to see no rematch. I doubt we'll see a rematch. But Lemos is now in the picture at 140. So that's what's up. You know, very deep division. Haney, Ryan Garcia, Sandor Martin, Gary Antoine Russell, Jack Catterall, Arnold Barboza, ill. Him and Jose Ramirez are fighting some bullshit fights coming up. Jose Ramirez, which one is fighting? Uh, 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 Arnold Barboza is on the um, undercard of Haney, Ryan Garcia. It's a horrible, horrible card. And Jose Ramirez is fighting Rancis Bartholomew. Ew. Just ew. I forgot who's he fighting again. Sean McComb. Ew. Uh, come on, mates. Got to get it together. With that being said, um, Hitchens is being slaughtered on social media. But I don't think he lost a fight. I think the right man won 115-113. But it's one of those 115-113s that I would have been like, all right, if Lemos would have won, I'd be like, all right, cool. 
You know, it could have went either way to me, man. With that being said, take your time out. Uh, like the video, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. As you can see right here, where am I at? At T-Street Controversy. And uh, on to uh, next week's fights. What we got coming up next week? Uh, Jared Anderson versus, uh, I forgot how to pronounce the guy's name. And also, uh, F.A. Jogba returns.